In this lesson, we'll learn how to compare two independent samples using the Mann-Whitney U-Test. Now, being a relatively straightforward comparison test, the Mann-Whitney test also gives us a good opportunity to learn some of the principles behind nonparametric rank statistics. So I'm going to walk you through an example of a very simple way to calculate the U statistic, and hopefully this will help lay the foundation for many of the concepts and principles on which many of the other nonparametric tests are based. The Mann-Whitney U is the nonparametric equivalent of the independent samples t-test, which is also used to compare two independent groups. However, unlike the t-test, the Mann-Whitney test compares samples by their rank. Let's take a closer look at this with an example. These data show the salaries of employees at a company for both salespeople and managers. I'll demonstrate the rank properties of the man Whitney you with a small subset of these data to simplify things. So here you'll see I've went through and ranked the data by salary with the smallest salary rank number one and the highest salary rank number seven. And here are the data rearranged so that we are in rank order from lowest to highest earnings. Notice too that when I ranked them, I disregarded their position in the company. That is, I just looked at all of the data together and ranked them based only on salary, ignoring whether each salary was for a salesperson or a manager. Only after we rank the data, um, in this case based on salary, do we consider our grouping variable, which in this case is um, their position at the company, either salesperson or manager. Now here's what we do next. Now that we've ranked the data based on salary from low to high, we then add up or sum the ranks for each group, salespeople and managers. And we note the sum of the ranks for each. In this case, the sum of the ranks were 11 for sales staff and 17 for managers. We'll then use this information in calculating the U statistic. Now before we do that, let's take a quick look at what the U statistic actually is. Essentially what the U statistic tells us is the degree of overlap in the ranks between two groups. That is, it gives us a measure of how many data points in one group have a higher or lower rank than data points in the other group. I'll use some diagrams to illustrate this point. Let's take our salaries example. Imagine one scenario in which after we rank the salaries of managers and salespeople, we find that there is a little bit of overlap in their rankings. That is, there are a few salespeople who make an equal amount or more money than a few managers. And as I just mentioned, the U statistic tells us just how much overlap there is. Now, imagine a different scenario in which there are many more salespeople that make an equal amount or more money compared to managers. We would have a lot more overlap in this situation, and therefore, our U value would actually be much larger compared to the first scenario here. If we consider the opposite scenario in which all of the managers make more money than all of the salespeople and we had no overlap between the salaries of the groups, this would be the case in which U would equal zero. So the main takeaway is that the smaller the U statistic, the bigger the difference between the groups. While the bigger the U statistic, the smaller the difference between the groups. Now this is in contrast to the parametric t statistic in which a larger t value means there's a bigger difference between the groups whereas a smaller t value means there is a smaller difference between the groups. So just keep that in mind it's actually opposite from the parametric statistic. That's not the case in all of the statistics we're going to be going over. Actually the u is unique uh, in that regard. All the other statistics, a bigger value means a bigger difference between the groups, except for here with the Mann-Whitney U. So let's get back to our example. We've ranked our data and we've summed our ranks for salespeople and managers. Good. The first step in calculating the U after this is to identify the group with smaller summed ranks, which in this case the salespeople have the smaller rank, 11, compared to 17 for the managers. Next, for each data point in the group with smaller ranks, we'll add up how many data points in the other group are smaller in rank. Now, this might sound a little confusing, so let's walk through it with our data. For each salary we have for a salesperson, we're going to count and add 
how many managers have a lower ranking salary than them. So let's go through our data. Um, for the lowest ranked salesperson, there are no managers that rank lower, so we have zero. For the next lowest ranked salesperson, again, no lower ranking managers, so zero. And same for the next lowest ranked salesperson, zero. However, for the next salesperson, there is one manager that ranks below them in salary, so we have one there. That's all of our data for salespeople, so we add up um, all of these for a total of one, and this is our U statistic, just one. That's all it is, very simple. However, before we go on with this, let's look at a few other situations to make sure we can calculate the U correctly when things are a little bit different and a little bit more complicated. So, for example, imagine we actually had a data set where two salespeople had higher incomes than one manager. We would calculate the U like this. First, the salesperson has uh, zero managers ranked lower than them. Same with the second. This salesperson has one manager ranked lower, and this salesperson also has one manager ranked lower. So our U comes out to two. Notice that I considered each salesperson one at a time and independent of the others so that the manager ranked third here actually ends up being counted twice in my calculation of U. This isn't a mistake. Um, the rule is to count how many data points from the other group are lower in rank than each data point in the lower summed ranked group, right? To illustrate this point a little further, let's now imagine that we have two salespeople that each have a higher rank than two managers, right here. Our U would be calculated as follows. Zero for the first salesperson, zero for the second, two for this salesperson, and two for this one, giving us a U of four. So if you're really into calculating a few of these without the use of a program like SPSS, just make sure you're treating each data point independently like this. Let's go back to our original data set where we had one salesperson with a higher ranked salary than one manager. So we've calculated our U and got one. Our next step is just to compare this value to the U distribution table to get our significance level, our, our P value, our P level. Um, if you've taken intro stats or you know a little bit about parametrics, I'm sure you're probably familiar with these tables and they may even have been the bane of your existence at one point in time. But don't worry, I am going to bring up um, distribution tables every now and then, but I will not belabor the point too much here. So here is part of the U distribution table that we'll use to estimate our p-value. We first need to identify our sample sizes noted on the table here as N1 and N2. For our data subset that we use, we had four salespeople and three managers. So that will be our N1 and N2. Uh, we find our critical U value in the table by finding where those two sample sizes meet in the table. So right here. And our critical view, U value is 0. Note I'm using the alpha level of 0.05. There's also an alpha level of 0 0.01 there. Um, using an alpha level of 0 0.05. Remember, alpha is our predetermined significance level. So uh, by convention, in many cases, as I'm sure you're well aware, it's set at 0 0.05, right? P equals 0 0.05. Um, so our critical value for U in the table is 0. And remember that the smaller u is, the bigger the difference between the groups. So our calculated value in this case must be equal to or lower than zero to be considered a significant difference in the groups, right? But our u was 1.0, and therefore our p-value is greater than 0.05, and there is no significant difference in pay between salespeople and managers in our very small subset of the data.